Welcome everybody back to the Friar Talk podcast and YouTube channel. For today's episode, we're going to be reacting and just really just talking about some of Bob Melvin's recent comments on the Padres pitching staff. He didn't really say much in, in regards to the lineup and, you know, left field battle and stuff like that. We've also recently talked about the, the left field battle as well. Um, and if they're going to go use an, an in-house option, if they're going to trade for someone, sign someone, whatever, we've talked about that in the past. Uh, I think that was posted on Monday, I want to say, if you guys want to check that out. But for this episode, we're going to be talking about what Bob Melvin had to say about the starting rotation, the closer role, and also just a couple individual players. So first thing that was really brought up was the battle for the fifth starter spot. He obviously says, all right, we got our first four, four guys. It's going to be Darvish or Musgrove on opening day. Then we have Snell and we got Clevenger. Now, both of them are coming back from injury, but I would expect both of them to pitch come you know start of the season not a hundred percent sure if they're going to be able to go five plus six plus whatever it is but those are your first four then you have Mackenzie Gore Nick Martinez Chris Paddock vying for that fifth starting spot so he starts talking about the fifth spot and basically gets into yeah we're considering a six-man rotation and if you guys listen to the channel, probably right when we started, we talked about the six-man rotation a lot. We don't, we haven't really talked about it that much lately. But when the Padres guys started getting injured last year, we kept bringing it back up, like, "Hey, you, I think that you know going to six-man rotation could maybe prevent some of these injuries." And one of the big things that Bob Melvin was talking about was, in his whole career, he's had one season where like their main five guys were their main five guys for the whole year, where it didn't become a seven, eight, nine rotation man rotation because of injuries, because you had to plug guys to, to play to start. So he started talking about, you know, maybe saving some guys with the six man rotation and also bringing up, you know, we're having a, a fight for the fifth, for the fifth man already. We have viable options and we have six option guys that could play that role. So Isaac, what do you think about the six man rotation? And before you start, I will let everyone know chase said he is all for the six man rotation and that he wants core to be a part of that rotation. But those were his comments. He wasn't able to record with us today. But Isaac, how do you feel about the six-man rotation? Yeah, right now it seems like uh, I, I read a little further into the article, saw that it's going to depend on what Ruben Niebla wants, what he thinks these, the best role will be for the pitchers. But regarding the six-man rotation itself, um, I don't know. I I haven't always been, like, crazy about it. I've never denied, like, you know, wanting it, especially because I know that it would probably save some of these guys from injuries. Bob Melvin brought up that some of these guys like pitching every fifth day. Um, and, and that's a really good point, especially considering you want all your guys as healthy and performing to the highest uh, level as possible. And if it requires them pitching on the fifth day, then so be it. That'd be the best. Um, but when you look into the into the rotation, Joe Musgrove, it seems like he's all hands on deck. He'll be ready. Same with you, Darvish. Um I saw something that said Blake Snell normally takes a little longer to ramp up. They might limit him to three or four innings and outing when the season starts. And that could be due be to the lockout. Um, Cause you know, they, they didn't get like a full off season together and he didn't get a full off season to ramp up with the Padres. So it might take him a bit longer to get acclimated into the, into the season because he didn't have as much time. You look at Mike Clevenger coming off of Tommy John surgery. Um <clears throat> Where where he's he did say he was progressing a lot better than his first one, but again, it's a Tommy John surgery. You don't want to you know take things too fast. You don't want to ramp him up too early because you don't know what you're risking with him. And you traded a lot to get him. And if if things pan out for him, you're gonna see he's gonna end up having from July or June to the end of the season the best ERA on this team because I still firmly believe with all the stuff he has with the pitch he added called the split change he will be the best pitcher in the rotation um of course you got chris paddock who looked fine he only gave up a home run for anyone who watches outing he looked good um unfortunately the same can't be said for ryan weathers i don't know if you included ryan weathers in this discussion matt um he gave up two bombs but still young still got a lot of room to grow i don't want to i don't want to bash him or anything I, i really like ryan weathers um we brought up nick martinez haven't seen him too much yet look forward to seeing him here in spring training um, who's the other guy you brought up? I think it was one more, right? That was obviously Gore. Um, I think just, just those three. Yeah. 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 So with that, you would obviously see the rotation being some sort of Musgrove and Darvish as one and two. That's apparently what Bob Melvin is going to go with. One of them will start opening day. So it looks like they'll be set at one and two. Then you're going to have Clevenger Snell at three and four, and then you're going to have, 
you could have Gore at number six and you could have Paddock at number five or Martinez. I don't know. Any sort of those three would work. Um, but that's just because they didn't have a full off season to get ramped up. You need to kind of save these guys' arms for the for the long for the long haul. And maybe when it hits May or June, because I don't think they're gonna do a six man rotation all season. Maybe when it hits May or June, then they can go back to the five man rotation. Whoever's performing best stays in the stays in the rotation. And that's that's like a really good competition to have because you know there's four guys that are gonna remain. So there's gonna be two, three guys fighting for that last spot come June. And and um that's really fun to see, especially considering Chris Paddock. In 2019, I don't know if anyone remembers, but like the first month or two, he was the phenom. <laughs> I remember seeing it was a, uh, it was a really hyped up matchup. It was it was uh, Clayton Kershaw versus Chris Paddock, and it was the phenom versus what like the legend or something, something like that. Paddock got lit up, <laughs> but point is, he was a lot of fun to watch his rookie year. We're all really excited for him, and I understand you know people aren't as excited for him now, but. I think the talent is still there, whereas Mackenzie Gore, everybody in in the Padres organization, the fan base is super excited for him. So that could be one of the best pitching, you know, matchups. And obviously, they're not going against each other, but in a way, they are going against each other in terms of who's vying for that fifth spot. Nick Martinez is kind of the sleeper here, especially considering he didn't have a good start to his career, kind of revived it in Japan. Now he's back trying to revive it again. And I've seen a lot of good things about him. You know, I, I don't have an opinion on him because I haven't seen him much, but look forward to seeing him soon. I'm definitely going to try and watch a little bit of him so that way I, I can uh, form an opinion on him. But, you know, regarding the six-man rotation, I think it could help out with health. health I'm sorry. Um, I think it could also, you know, just get everybody implemented into the season, get everybody ready for, you know, the, the, the you know, the long road, and from like July to September, because I remember that's where we faltered last year. That's where we started sucking because everybody went down in the rotation. And that's not only because, you know, everybody, I, I think most of the rotation actually underperformed even in April, May, uh, June, especially Blake Snell, who didn't really ramp it up to July. And that's my guy. I love Blake Snell, but he didn't really ramp it up until July. Um, you Darvish was kind of the other way around. He fell off in July. Musgrove was pretty consistent all throughout the season, had a little bit of, of rough spots. And then those other spots were just Chris. I mean, Chris Paddock went down, but he didn't look too hot up until the last two months of his season. And the fifth spot was always who, you know, who's it going to be? So um, injuries really hit us late last season, and maybe a six-man rotation can prevent that from happening this season. Yeah, it is really interesting just when you look at this rotation because I know that you look at the Padres' projected wins on like fan graphs and stuff, and it's over 90 games. And you're like, well, yeah, if the rotation is healthy, sure. But how is the rotation supposed to stay healthy? That's one of like the – I would say that's probably the biggest aspect of this season is what is the starting rotation's health look like? If having a six-man rotation helps that, then I do think it's something that they should definitely explore. And it seems like they're open to the idea. Not like it's a lock that it's going to happen. or that, Like Bob Melvin made it pretty clear. Like, I don't know if we're going to do it, but we are considering it right now. We're looking into if we want to do that. Um, and, you know, a guy like Nick Martinez is a, is a great example. Maybe Nick Martinez doesn't look that good early on. Now, I will say this. You said that you probably think it's more between Paddock and Gore for that fifth spot. I actually think it's kind of Nick Martinez is to lose. So I'm a little bit different on you in, in that spot, just because I think they gave him a lot of money to come here and start. And I think that they want him to come here and start right away. Now, if you have a six man rotation, even if you have a five man rotation, you could have all of these guys on the opening day roster, potentially, especially when, you know, you brought it up, Clev Snell, they might not be ready to go right away. So that's an aspect where maybe that it looks a little like different, just how the rotations laid out. And it might not be a traditional five-man rotation. So that's kind of what he had to say on the on the six-man rotation. Switching gears a little bit, going into the bullpen. First guy he highlighted was Emilio Pagan. And he basically talked about Pagan's struggles. And he said, you know, this is a guy I've coached before. And if you guys weren't familiar, they, they were on one of the Oakland teams together, um, Bob Melvin and Emilio Pagan. And he started talking about it. And he basically said, yeah. Pretty sure everyone knows that Pagan struggled last year. He did not, he, he looked, it was not, it was an off year. But he goes, one thing about that is a lot of pitchers that are relievers are very up and down throughout their career. 
And he looked at it as it more of like, just kind of like, yeah, it's a bounce back opportunity for Emilio Pagan. So I thought this was really interesting. He also brought up something else that he added a third pitch, which was a split finger. And I think that could pay a lot of dividends to Emilio Pagan and the Padres, just because we've seen that sometimes his fastball looks extremely predictable and he'll throw it and the guy will, it feels like a guy takes it 500 feet. And that was last year where he's just started getting lit up late in the year. And it seemed like everyone just knew what he was going to throw. Adding a pitch couldn't kind of change some stuff for him. So I, and, and I, I think that maybe part of Bob Melvin's comments are, okay, he's kind of talking about a guy that he's already been a part of. He's going to talk highly of him, but he was like pretty excited to talk about Emilio Pagan. So I, I think that's another guy that to bring up and then keeping it in the bullpen discussion, talking about the closer position a little bit, two names he brought up as potential closers for the Padres right now, because that's been a, that's been a topic we talked about it in the past, but that's been a topic where there's a lot of unknowns there. And two of the guys that he brought up, which I think for a lot of fans, this is really exciting. The first one, the Nelson Lamette, we've talked about that we want him to see, we want to see him converted to be a closer. I don't know if that means opening day, he's your closer. I don't know where he's at health wise, but Bob Melvin is super pumped to be working with the Nelson Lamette, and he thinks he is a very, very good player still. So I think that does mean a lot. I think health wise, I don't, I think if he wasn't there, you wouldn't hear those comments. I think you'd hear, yeah, you know, we're going to work him back up to speed. We're going to do this. And I think you'd see him being a, a lot more like skeptical of, of him getting, being able to pitch. It didn't really feel like that was the case. Other guy he brings up, Robert Suarez, a guy that we've talked about in the past. Robert Suarez kind of in a, a similar situation than Nick Martinez, where it's just a lot of unknowns, but he has the stuff. He throws gas. He come in here and perform at a very high level and he could earn that, that closing role. So Isaac, I know you're in a, in a different spot than, than Bob Melvin, maybe with uh, Emilio Pagan, but w- what do you think about these three names mentioned in the bullpen? So I'll briefly talk about Robert Suarez first. I don't know too much about him, but if Bob Melvin has enough confidence to put him in you know, competition for that closer role, then I have enough confidence to put him in the competition for that closer role, man. It was really exciting to hear him talk about Robert Suarez, but even more exciting to hear him talk about the Nelson Met man, go – you know, for anyone who hasn't watched it or listened to it, go listen to Ben and Woods' uh, interview with Bob Melvin, man. It was it was really fun to, to listen to because unlike our last manager, he sounded professional. He sounded like he knew what he was talking about. He sounded fun. Like, he sounded so cool to, to listen to, and uh, it was really enlightening. I mean, I can't remember in my lifetime being this excited to listen to a manager or have a manager. Um, a new manager is what I meant to say. But Emilio Pagan... He kind of had a, for anyone who remembers, the game where the Dodgers were down by, I think it was like three or four. Not this past year. Not this past year. This was when I was a kid. Um, This was when Adrian Gonzalez was on the team. And uh, I forgot who let up the first one or two home runs. Then Trevor Hoffman came in and let up the next two. But it was four home runs back to back to back to back. And the Dodgers ended up winning the game. This one with Emilio Pagan, this is when everybody started to really turn on him, especially me. Because I was livid. This is when he came out after and he said, you know, my RPMs look good. Everything looked good. And this was when he gave up like two or three home runs back to back to back. And the Padres ended up losing the game to the Dodgers. And in a, like in a series where, if I remember correctly, this was the beginning of September. So the Padres were still in contention. Um, I think this was a series right before they went into Arizona. Correct me if I'm wrong. It might have been the last one against the Dodgers. But um Everything like nothing looked good. It was just high fastballs that he gave up to. I think it was Bellinger. I forgot who it was. I, I want to say one of them was Bellinger, but nothing looked good for him. Um, but when you add a third pitch, you get a new offseason, you get a whole offseason, you get a new pitching coach, you get a new manager who has shown confidence in you, not only recently, but in the past as well. And and he talks about how you know it's very refreshing to come to a new organization, but still have old faces where he has jerks and profar, he has Emilio Pagan, he has old faces that he's worked with before. So he's excited about that. He's excited about Emilio Pagan's third pitch. And and uh, remember, Emilio Pagan was a closer back uh, one year with the Rays. So um, I don't really think we can rule him out as a closer, at least early on. Um, now, I don't think that'll be his role. I think he's more suited for like a middle inning setup man kind of guy. But again, we don't really have a set closer yet. We could see the beginning start out by closer by committee. Um, and that would be fun to watch, especially I, I want to say the Giants did it this past season with two or three guys until they got settled in with Rodgers and Duvall. Just to mention Duvall, Duvall's 
going to be one of the best relievers next year. But back to the Padres, um, you know, with, with Pagan, it was just frustrating seeing him last year where he succeeded. It looks like he was putting himself and he was like he was in a position to succeed. He was succeeding for a while last year. And then I don't know what happened. Something turned where we started seeing a lot more of 2020 early Pagan, early uh, version of 2020 Pagan than we would, you know, back in 2020, beginning of 2021 guy. So I think there is potential there. I think there's a lot in him. I think he throws a 95, 96 mile per hour fastball. So he's clearly got some life on it. He added a third pitch. I, I don't even know what his second pitch is, to be honest. I need to look at that. But um, I think there's a lot of upside for him. I think there's a new sense of comfort with Bob Melvin because he's been with him before. Also, he knows he has a set role in the bullpen, whereas people were kind of, including me, I was kind of hoping oh, maybe he'll be gone. But, um, you know, I think I think he'll be all right this year. I'm not going to say he's going to be like under a 2-5 or a 3 RA guy, but we just need him to be better than he was in the back end of 2021. Yeah, I, I think you're right there. I mean, he, he definitely struggled, especially late in the year. And, and you bring up, like, you know, you don't really know what happened. I feel like that's just kind of the case with the entire team. <laughs> like, and, and with the bullpen, I do think a lot of that was Emilio Pagan pitched a lot last year. Same with, with Tim Hill. Tim Hill looked good early on. I think it's like, and it looked a lot different at the end of the year between Tim Hill and Emilio Pagan. But they both, like, fell off hard at the end of the season. And, and the whole team did. We we were we used to complain, and this is before even we're doing YouTube. And we only had a podcast in 2020. We would complain all the time about how Jace Tingler managed the bullpen and how Jace Tingler would manage the lineup and stuff like that. We did that in 2021 as well. Don't get me wrong, but that was like a two season buildup almost of just like having guys completely mismanaged and. Since we're talking about Bob Melvin, I did want to bring this up very quickly. And I think we'll maybe do a full episode on this later. And, you know, if we're talking about, you know, why the Padres are going to be good versus why they aren't, or, you know, like that, those kind of discussions, like when it gets closer to the season, one of the biggest factors, in my opinion, is Bob Melvin. You're going from the biggest change in the sport, the biggest upgrade in the sport at manager. And we saw how much it would consistently burn the Padres when Jace Tingler would do something. And we'd be like, what is he doing? And it was very like, not like rookie MLB manager, like rookie manager type stuff where he would use a double switch in the most, you know, random spot or when he'd put a guy in a situation where it made no sense because the guys that he that were coming up at the plate had ridiculous career numbers against him or he'd bat Tommy Pham fifth for no apparent reason whatsoever. Like there were so many things like that. And we're not going to see that with Bob Melvin. We're going to see someone that is one of the best in the game and someone that's going to completely elevate this team. Listen to what former players have to say about him. Listen to what Emilio Pagan has to say about him. Listen to what Jerickson profile has to say about him. Listen to other guys in the A's that, you know, used to, to work with him. Same thing goes for Ruben Niebla, but I think that's somewhere it, where Bob Melvin is going to make a tremendous difference. Instead of losing 10 games because you're manager, you might win 10 different games. That's a 20-game flip, and that is massive for the Padres. And you look at, at what was really the root of their problems last year, and I know this offseason has been very underwhelming, but you look at the what was the root of the Padres' problems, it was that they had an inept coaching staff. And I do not believe that that's the case anymore. I think they have a very, very high-end coaching staff. So that's somewhere where I'm super pumped about this team and and something that we're definitely going to talk about a lot more. But I just wanted to bring it up real quickly since we were talking about his comments anyways on some of these guys. But that's all I got. Isaac, anything else you want to add? Yeah, I've seen people say that uh, you know Bob Melvin doesn't deserve the praise us Padre fans give him because of his, uh, his pedigree. He hasn't exactly won – a championship gotten too deep into the playoffs, but how would he? He was always given playoff pieces, not championship pieces. Um, those playoff pieces that he worked with, they were playoff pieces because of him, because of his uh, coaching staff, his development. And we brought over one of the guys from his coaching staff, and uh, we we upgraded in multiple areas of our coaching staff. And um, so with with that, you know, I just think Bob Melvin, he's going to be fantastic, man. He's shown a lot of. Uh, 
like i don't know man it's just a different vibe i don't know if you if you know what i mean like it's just a different vibe with bob melvin it's like a winning mentality now um i didn't feel that with jace tingler um like to me it was like a complete shock that he was even fired but um yeah i I always felt like Bob Melvin was never given a, a fair shot, especially because the A's, you look at them right now, they're only spending like 30 million, around 30 to 50 million is probably where they were spending with Bob Melvin. Um, comes to a team that's spending over 200 million. So I'm not trying to say that this team is ultra talented or anything. Clearly they're not. They have some holes to fill. I don't know if they will be filled, but they do have holes to fill still. So, um, but man, Bob Melvin has worked with some great players. You look at it, Matt Olson. Matt Chapman, uh, I believe Josh Donaldson, Yoni Cespedes, um, a lot of good players, man. Ramon, Ramon Laureano, a lot of good players. So there's a lot of uh, a lot of hope that he can turn some of our decent players to good players and some of our good players to great players. That's what I'm hoping for out of Bob Melvin. I think that's what we're going to see. Yeah, super pumped about it. Um, and I think these are some pretty positive comments from from Bob Melvin here. And, I, and, and this wasn't just from one interview. This is actually from a couple. Um, but, you know, on what he had to say about the Padres Padres pitching rotation, which I think is extremely talented, and we're going to see how it plays out. But we're going to be talking a lot more about the Padres pitching rotation. We'll get back into some of the lineup stuff. We're just kind of waiting to see if they make another move. If they do, if they don't, I'm not really sure right now. They definitely should. I can promise you they definitely should. Um, so we're kind of waiting on a lot of that stuff. But the pitching rotation is definitely set for for who they have there now. So, Thank you guys for listening. I think that's going to do it for this episode. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed. If, if you guys are not subscribed, hit the subscribe button. Um, and hopefully we'll be bringing you guys a, a bunch of Padres content throughout the season. Usually do about six episodes and then one live stream a week. We want to keep that going. Um, throughout the year this time, we're going to be doing weekly, uh, weekly live streams every Sunday, just kind of doing weekly recaps. Um, so that's going to be a really fun thing to do. Um, but yeah, we're going to be trying to try to post daily content throughout the season. So, so super pumped about that. But with that said, thank you guys for listening and we'll be back with Padres content tomorrow.